Forza Horizon 4 is the newest open world racing game from the talented teams at Playground Games and Microsoft Game Studios, and I want to thank them for sending over a code for the purpose of this video. Revealed at this year's E3, Forza Horizon 4 features some big improvements over its predecessors, namely dynamic seasons in a shared open world. But is that enough to keep fans of the franchise happy, or is Forza Horizon starting to feel a little stale? Does Forza Horizon 4 do enough to claim the crown of the greatest racing game of all time? All that and more will be answered in my review for Forza Horizon 4. Hey guys, what's going on? Randall Thor 19 back again with another review. So over the past week, I have put in around 30 plus hours and hit level 100 in Forza Horizon 4. I've completed the Horizon Story Mode and done almost all of the races found in the game. I've taken part in five Forzathon events with large groups of random people online and raced in summer, winter, autumn, and fall. All the clips you'll be seeing are from the Xbox One X version of the game in which I opted to play in performance mode giving me 60 frames per second at 1080p. You can also choose to play in quality mode which hits native 4K or play it on your PC since Forza Horizon 4 is an Xbox Play Anywhere title. You can get your hands on the game starting September 28th if you have the Ultimate Edition, which grants early access, or October 2nd for its normal retail and Xbox Game Pass release. So if you are waiting for the game to unlock, or just deciding if you want to spend $60 on the title, rest assured that once again Playground Games has hit it out of the park, as Forza Horizon 4 is a better experience than Forza Horizon 3 in almost every way, even if the series is starting to feel a bit samey. Let's dive into some of the specifics, shall we? My lord, does Forza Horizon 4 ever look stunning? Honestly, Forza Horizon 4 might be the best looking game on the Xbox One X, and Britain has never looked better. The driving and handling of the cars should instantly feel familiar to anyone who has played Forza Horizon 3. It feels great to race at top speeds along the road fighting for position or just drifting around corners in the dirt racking up those skill points. But let's shift gears and talk about the new things that Forza Horizon 4 has added. The big addition to this year's game is the inclusion of dynamic seasons. In previous Horizons you were only able to race in the conditions playground games shipped the title with. But as they said on stage at E3, seasons change everything. Now you can do cross country races in a blizzard during winter, or perhaps a rainstorm during spring. The seasons make the game feel more fresh than its counterparts as the world and how you race change around you. I found that the cars handle and drive a bit differently in winter as opposed to say summer, which makes doing the same race twice more appealing since not only will the look of the world be different, but how you race changes as well. When you start the game up, you will be put in Horizon Prologue. This is a four to six hour crash course into everything the game has to offer before it sends you out into the shared open world. During this time, you will do races in summer, spring, autumn, and winter, so you can experience each season and all the types of races and events you can do in the game. Once you reach a certain point in the prologue, you will connect to the Horizon Life servers and the cloud-controlled AI drive avatars that you had previously seen driving around will now be replaced with real players. While connected to the servers, the season, time of day, and weather will be fully synchronized for everyone. The season will change every Thursday, bringing with it new seasonal championships and events. In my time reviewing the game, it has been Horizon Autumn, but this Thursday it will finally change to Horizon Summer. Even though the live server will remain the same season for a week, that doesn't mean you are forced to race in that season. Almost every race has a blueprint, which is a way for people to race how they see fit. You can change the car type, the time of day, whether it's raining or clear, and yes, you can change the season. So if it's Horizon Spring, but you want to do every race in winter, that option is available to you. While connected to the live servers, you can convoy up with other players as each race can be done solo, in co-op, versus, or against a rival's time. But the big feature is the addition of hourly Forzathon lives. Every hour on the hour, there will be an event marked on the map and any players currently roaming the world can take part. It's a timed event which requires teamwork to hit certain goals like 50,000 feet jump through a danger sign, 100,000 drift points acquired, 10,000 miles per hour through a speed trap. 
and don't worry about smashing into someone that is in the middle of a sick drift as other players appear as ghosts and you will just drive right through them. At the end of the Forzathon live event you are rewarded with Forzathon points which can be redeemed to get certain cars and other rewards. Because this is a group event you are at the mercy of how many people join up. The more people the easier it is. If no one shows it's actually pretty lame as you won't have enough to complete the tasks. This is an interesting addition for sure and many people will enjoy this social aspect the Forzathon live stuff offers but I stopped doing them after the fifth one. There needs to be more events and different types of them to keep my interest. If you aren't a social type, you can of course choose to play Horizon Solo, which removes the real people from the game entirely. The choice is yours. One of the other changes I really liked is something called Horizon Life. In previous Horizons, when you completed races and earned XP, you leveled up and each level gave you a wheel spin. Well, XP is now called Influence in Horizon 4 and you earn it by doing anything and everything the game has to offer. Each type of race, whether it's road racing, cross country, or street race, now has its own progression and set of rewards. Each level up can give a new car, money, clothing, or real spins, which then can give you money, cars, clothing, and emotes. Yes, even emotes. You can now customize your character with the clothing that you unlock and you can watch him dab before every race. What a world we truly live in, huh? But it's not just the racing that has its own rewards. When I said everything had its own progression system, I really meant it. Building tunes, painting, taking pictures, doing drift zones and danger signs, and yes, even watching and streaming Forza Horizon 4 on Mixer will give you influence and rewards. I really like this change as I felt no matter what I was doing, I was getting something out of it. Forza Horizon 4 even adds something called Horizon Story, which I was quite interested to check out. A story mode? In my Horizon game? But I ended up a little bit disappointed because basically Horizon Story is just a bucket list from older games renamed and repackaged. There are four Horizon Story missions, each with 10 events where you have to either drive to a spot in a certain amount of time, drive through a speed trap at a certain speed, etc, etc. One story has you working as a stunt driver for a movie, while another one has you testing out the fastest and most expensive cars the game has to offer. There is even one about famous racing video games, but my favorite was the Drift Club. Showcase races are back, but this time they aren't the focal point like they used to be. There are five of them to do. You can race against hovercraft, a train, a group of motorcycles, a jet plane, and yes, the rumors were true. You can be the Master Chief with Cortana in your ear giving directions in this Halo experience, which has pelicans, banshees, and other warthogs driving around. And it felt pretty damn good to hear the Halo music blasting in my headset. My favorite was the race against the hovercraft, and I was a bit taken aback that Playground Games reused one of the opening races as its own showcase event. Seemed a little bit lazy to me. You can even buy property in the game. These houses act as a starting point every time you load up Forza Horizon 4, and each house has its own perks associated with it. I recommend finding and buying the $2 million mansion that gives you the ability to fast travel anywhere. Pretty useful in this huge open world if you want to do a race on the other side of the map. One change I'm not a huge fan of is how skill points work in Horizon 4. Every time you go out and drive and do something really cool like drift, get huge air, smash through trees and walls, drive through oncoming traffic, you get skills and when the meter fills up you earn a point. You can spend these points on increasing how fast you earn skill points or bumping up the multiplayer from 5 to 6. In previous Forza Horizons, when you bought the new skill, it was universal. But Playground changed things up a bit for 4. Each car now has its own skill tree. This means the perks you get from the skill tree only apply for that car and not for every car. Some might really like this change, but I tend to forget to spend my points on the new car that I take out for a spin and then I sit there wondering why my skill points aren't climbing so fast. Of course, the game has multiplayer for those that want to race against real people, or perhaps just screw around having fun in game types like Flag Rush 
and Infection. Those aren't my type of things, but I know people enjoy and look forward to it every release. I can't wait to see what expansions Playground comes up with for Horizon 4, as the bar has been set with the incredible Hot Wheels DLC the team did with Horizon 3. Hopefully they add more content and events throughout the year to make people want to visit Britain every single week. Playground Games has created the best racing game of the generation hands down. Forza Horizon 4 is a better game than its predecessors, and the quality of work on the game can't be denied. The additions of dynamic seasons make coming back to the game more appealing. The shared open world is cool, but I don't see myself doing many Forzathons. The reworking of the game's progression system is a welcome change, and it's nice to be constantly rewarded with free cars and money in an era of loot boxes and microtransactions. This is why I'm going to give Forza Horizon 4 a 9.5 out of 10. It's a game that every racing fan should pick up, whether it's at full price, on sale, or as part of your subscription to Xbox Game Pass. With that said, however, if you don't care for racing games, Forza Horizon 4 is not going to change your mind. And if I'm being brutally honest, I do feel a bit of serious fatigue with Forza Horizon. The game is outstanding, but it is starting to feel like been there, done that. Hopefully Playground has some fresh ideas to change it up for the next installment. Perhaps maybe adding some cops? Anyways guys, that is the review. Make sure to tell me if you're excited for Horizon 4 and are picking it up in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Share this out with more people on social media so everyone can know just how good Forza Horizon 4 really is. Hit that sub button if you're new to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you always want to be notified when I drop new content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.